election, yes. <laughs> it's all backwards. You can't help your fellow citizen because you'll get charged with assault. Everything has to be from the mighty state, which is the same thing that we talked about last week when you can't protect yourself if they come into your home because your recourse is, of course, the mighty courts. The mighty courts, indeed. Now, I, it depends an awful lot on where you put your trust. I mean, do you put your trust in government? Do you put your trust in your elected officials? Well, that's one of the the whole reasons I don't advocate participation in the political system is um, where, you know, people call in, oh, what's, what's the answer? Well, the answer to political problems obviously cannot be more politics, right? That would be contrary, logically. But we have many ways to divest ourselves, right? If we don't want to participate in the Federal Reserve system, right, we have a lot of ways of opting out of that. You can buy precious metals. You can buy um, you can buy foreign currencies. There's all sorts of things you can do to divest yourself. You can buy food now and not pay the uh, the inflated food prices in a few months. So there's all sorts of ways to just walk away from the state mechanism, and uh, that's really the key. If people move their capital and if they move their sanction away from the state. You know, it would it would fall apart on its own. Nobody would care anymore. It's harder and harder to achieve that right now because every single aspect of your life, every aspect of your life is regulated by the government. Every aspect of your life that you choose to leave within this jurisdiction. There's a lot of ways you can move um, assets, property, etc. out of this jurisdiction. Well, let me ask you this in terms of uh, moving things out of the jurisdiction. I mean, let's say if you did buy gold and precious metals, what's to stop the government from doing what they did in the 1930s and just say, everyone shall surrender their privately owned gold, yada, yada, yada? You buy them overseas. You can buy and hold gold in Australia, Switzerland, and Austria through um, reputable insured companies. Um, you can buy property in South America. You can you can do all sorts of things. You know, pick throw a dart at a map and decide where you'd go if you wanted. You know, if you wanted to go somewhere to hang out and move your assets there. The the, the U.S. government has no jurisdiction to um, take your assets from those from those uh, countries if you choose to move them there. And if you don't choose to move them there, then uh, you know who do you have to blame? I guess you kind of have to take your chances. Go ahead, Aaron. A lot of Jews fell victim to that, though, and lost a lot of their assets to people in Switzerland. Right, and a lot didn't, too. A lot went through Switzerland in the late 30s before the border got shut and ended up in the United States or in the U.K. That's how F.A. Hayek ended up in uh, in London and von Mises ended up in New York. They saw the writing on the wall, they moved their money out, and then they moved themselves out. Bottom line is if you're counting on your wealth being in your IRAs, your retirement accounts, and things like that, you need to rethink. We've already seen, what, just a couple of years ago, you think that all your invested money just disappeared? They took it. People, I know a guy that lost $250,000 in his retirement, and where did it go? Somebody has that money. It's gone. And now we're talking, I've seen where the government, not real openly yet, but they're bannering around, maybe we'll have to seize people's IRAs to help fund government for a while, especially if we don't raise our debt ceiling. And if you think they won't do that, you're dead wrong. All they have to do is not pay into their um, mandated retirements that the government has, they can seize anything they want at any time. They have in the past, right here in the good old U.S. of A., and they will and can do it again. Yeah, the the pension fund thing is already, the, the uh, seizure of those is already happening in uh, certain European countries, so definitely possible. But again, you have, you know, there's a way out of that. You can opt out of that system if you want. It's It's easy to do. It's anonymous. Um, it's untraceable unless you're an idiot. So, you know, prepare. And it's legal. That you know, that that's one of the things though, the difference between legal and moral that, that yeah, I it's kind of hard for me sometimes to determine what the best course of action to do when you've got the, when you've got people who are legally stealing and, and we've got laws passed that make it illegal to do things that are morally right. 
then things are backwards. I don't know. Did we ever give the phone number today? You no, can call in four five eight talk if you'd like to call in and participate with the discussion. Or you can join us in the chat room, kfar six six zero dot com. Let me ask you about that, uh, Dave and uh, Aaron and Josh, just kind of in generally speaking. Uh, where do you draw the line when you see a law passed that uh, demands that we do something that you do not believe is the right thing to do? Um, such as? Well, I mean, obviously, such as uh, surrender your gold, for instance. Oh, well, yeah. When they did that in the 30s, um, they didn't actually send people door to door. What what they did is they said, oh, you're supposed to take your your gold to the bank. Now, given the number of... Uh, pre-1933 coins still in circulation. Obviously, most people did not do that. Um, of course, that decision is made easier. You know, if you think that's coming and you don't believe in that in that law or whatever the state's law is, you know, you move that stuff to a place where you know it will be respected and treated treated well. So, obviously, you don't want to comply with with immoral law, but there's a um, you know a cost benefit analysis. Are you gonna Are you gonna sit in jail because uh, they know you have a little baggie of gold coins in your house, or are you gonna give them a baggie of gold coins? And so I guess that's the same thing with uh, guns too. I mean, if they if they issue a similar order about surrender your guns, they don't know who has guns. Right. Well, they do to a certain point, but there's a big difference between lawful and legal. Legal is anything that someone that's in power right now comes to the top of his head and he decides this is now legal. I can legalize. Crime. I can legalize theft. I want this. I want that. But we have something called, and as I like to always point out, it's not the giver of our rights, not the giver of our freedoms. It is to restrain the government. The Constitution gives us the right and duty to not follow, or sets out the right and duty to not follow an unconstitutional, unlawful act. Legal doesn't make it right. I'd like to point some out real quick. Dave said that they didn't go door to door and get the gold per se. Well, that's that's pretty much the standard for government. The Nazis, contrary to what everyone believes, did not go door to door and take firearms from the people. Everybody always talks about, well, the line for me is when they come to get my guns. It's not going to happen. They'll make them, they may make them illegal someday, but even in Nazi Germany, they didn't go door to door and take them. They made it a crime to have a gun and a crime by death to have a gun and be a Jew. They never went and took them from anybody. No, because they have the wonderful people that, for one, 90% of the people would obey it because, well, government says it, we have to do it. And the other part is, like you got back, get back to your neighbor, turns you in. So I said, get to know them, get on the same page with them. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Oh, they didn't hold. This is Patriots Lament. If you'd like to sound off, you can call in at 458 Talk or you can join us in the chat room, kfar660.com. Good morning, caller. Hey, this is Roger. Hey, Roger, what's on your mind? Well, first of all, I'd like to apologize for going all the way till the end of the show last week. I know you guys probably had some closing statements, and I didn't uh, didn't realize it was so late. But um, what I wanted to say was um, a friend of mine had heard the show yes last week, and uh, and they um, he said, you know, you are man, you're a radical, you are, you know, you're a fringe radical, you know, and uh, I said, well, standing up for your freedom, does does that make you a radical? You know, does that make you a, a Extremist. That's actually the word he used. Extremist. And uh, and uh, I said, you know, if, if that's the case, then uh, every one of the founding fathers was an extremist. You know, they were all uh, they all uh, yeah. went against the law. Like, they went against like the status man. quo. They were extremists. Yeah. Absolutely, they were because they but they stood up for what was right, liberty. Um, was it Goldwater who said that uh, extremism, extremism in defense in, of liberty is no vice? That's exactly right. You know, I, I, I guess, you know, an awful lot of uh, somebody's going to put you in a box no matter what. Do you choose to put yourself in a box by giving yourself a party title, a party label? or do you, can, you know, What do you want? Do you want somebody to put you in a box or do you put yourself in a box? Gentlemen, we're up against the break here. we got the Fox News. 
458-TALK is the number if you'd like to participate in the program. This is Patriots Lament. 458-TALK is the number online, kfar660.com. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Defense Secretary Robert Gates, who steps down at the end of the month, making a farewell visit to Afghanistan. We are always uh, impatient. Uh, There is clearly more to be done. Gates meeting with our troops and top officials, urging Afghan troops to step up responsibility for their own security. The E. coli outbreak in Europe has killed 18 people, sickened hundreds more. Now four people in the U.S. who recently traveled from Germany apparently sickened one person in Milwaukee. We're confident that the infection was not contracted here in Milwaukee. City Health Commissioner Bevan Baker also confident in the U.S. food supply. The investigation in Europe focusing on tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce. Fox Radio's Pam Puso and a real-life balloon boy, nine-year-old Bobby Bradley, now the youngest trained pilot to fly a balloon solo, taking off early today in New Mexico and landing about half an hour later. Fox News, we report, you decide. Don't let your coworkers call it hate radio just because we question authority. We are KFAR, and we will keep on critiquing regardless of who's in power. Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Joining me in the studio from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett. Good morning, Josh. Morning, Steve. From... The Campaign for Liberty, is that what you call it, Dave? Yeah. Dave Giesel, good morning, Dave. And from Far North Tactical over there in the corner, we've got Aaron Bennett. Is that where you belong, in the corner? Is that <laughs> normal? Uh, absolutely. I don't like Republicans, so therefore I worship Satan. Oh, is that what it, is? <laughs> is that what it boils down to? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I th- There was a little rally for liberty or freedom or whatever they called it last night over there at the uh, Pioneer Park. Did you guys hear about that? No. No. Joe, Joe Miller was there. Uh, Michael Dukes was there. I'm not sure how many. Uh, Rally for politics, maybe, is what it should have been called. Well, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but, I, I mean, it, it seems like there are some people within the Tea Party movement and uh, some within the Republicans that are trying to co op the Tea Party movement that bandy about the term liberty. I think they have a different perspective on that word than somebody like you or like me. Uh, how would you define liberty? Is it libertarianism? Is it libertinism? Uh, how would you? What is? What does it mean that word liberty? Uh, liberty is it's based on two principles. Uh, one is called the non-aggression principle, which is that it's never right for you to aggress against someone if they haven't first aggressed against you. So it's live and let live. And the other is respect for a contract, which is respect for property rights. And so if, if someone is the rightful owner of something, you don't have claim to that. And that's basically all it is. So if somebody's doing something with their property that you don't approve of, if they're not aggressing against you, you have no, you know, you can complain, right? But you have no, uh, you have no right to tell them what to do or to force them to do anything. And if you call the authorities and try to get the authorities to come and force them to do it, what's that? Well, see, the authorities themselves, that calls an interesting question. Are you calling a private security agency that's voluntarily contracted and paid for with, um, you know, non-stolen money? Or are you calling a coercive agency who is paid for out of the coffers of stolen money and exists based on a political system that's rooted in coercion? That's a good question. I wanted to say something back to Roger there. Sorry that we hit the break right then. I hear the same thing a lot. You guys are radical. You're radical. You're too radical or whatever. But what does that really mean? How can you be too radical for your personal liberty? And not just your own, but you want your fellow man to have personal liberty. But this is what radical was back in the day in the 1770s. I'll just read something real quick here. 